smile. Excellent. Very good. All right. Can you see my screen, please? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Today is a big day because you're going, we are going to pass, even though that you already know about the cell membrane and you know all the organelles that we mentioned, and probably you saw that in the past, in, in your past, in, in high school or something, but we are going to get that into the next level. I'm going to try to see from different perspective and definitely to stick on your mind and we're going to remark a few things for your nursing process, your nursing, I mean, your nursing uh, 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 program. All right, so for this, we need to start for the, for the very beginning. And probably this is the last time you're going to hear in your, your whole life, because in the future, you're going to just go into more uh, elaborate topics. But this is the base. And knowing this is the base is going to make you understand what is coming later. All right, so let's talk about the cell anatomy. All right, so the cell anatomy, very, very, very few things we need to know, or very, very point things we need to know. Cell. Cell is the smallest unit of life. In conclusion, all this slide is related to that. It's the smallest unit of life. So one cell. One cell is the smallest unit of, of life. And this cell is alive is alive is alive so what i'm remarking is alive so and a cell who is able to multiply by himself means that that structure is alive we call that is having life so somebody or something that can multiply by himself that is going to be considered a live individual okay alive okay so, for example, cells. The cell is going to be able to divide. If you cut your skin, for example, if you cut your skin, the cells of the some of cells of the skin are going to be destroyed, right? So you and that cells they need to be replaced. You're not going to be living with destroys destroyed cells the rest of your life. No, they're going to be need to be replaced. And to be replaced, the remaining cell who is still Okay, they are going to multiply and give and replace the cells who are being damaged. So that is the capacity of the cell to divide. So our cells are alive. So for example, I will tell you one thing. A virus. A virus is an organism that is alive or is not alive? It's alive. Alive. It's alive, right? Why you say it's alive? Um, they can change. Okay. It can get mutated or something. Okay, very good, very good, very good. But you know what? The virus is considered not a live organism. Sorry. No. It's not a live. Confusing? Yes. But yeah. they're going to clarify right now. Okay? For example, this COVID-19. COVID-19 is a virus that uh, most people say, oh, it's alive, it's a live virus. No, it's not a live virus. It's not considered a living organism. Why is that? And that is basically how we explain we get this sick when, uh, from viruses. Okay, let's go to the point. The cell, your cell, my cell, can divide by himself. If you put the cell alone by himself, the cell can divide and multiply. That is your cells, my cells. But the virus, if you put the virus alone by, his, by himself, isolated, the virus become old and die because the virus yes. cannot multiply by himself. So that's why the virus in order, but you say the virus are multiplying. Yes, the virus are multiplying. But the virus, what is doing to multiply is to invade a host. Because so, the, the DNA or the RNA of the of the virus is an incomplete, incomplete DNA RNA. So that's why they get into the host, the cells invade inside the host in order to get that piece of RNA of DNA that is missing in the virus. 
¿De qué vida? Ok. Is that clear? I want to that be clear, please. Yes. Okay, everybody got it. Okay. All right. Yes. So now, so now you can tell a virus. Yes, they can multiply. They can multiply, but only in the presence of a host. So he cannot survive by himself. And to the definition of to be alive is that the individual should be actually independent. Independent is the word. You okay with that? Yes. Excellent. So now, if you see here the cell, an autonomous self replicating independent and functional unit of life. So it's the smallest unit of life. Remember the monomers that we were talking in the past? Yes. The, in life, the, the monomer, the mono, we don't call monomer, but this the smallest unit of life is going to be called a cell. We got it? Yes. Excellent. All right, so let's talk about some, some guys here. Uh, we are going to see the bacteria, the bacteria and versus our, our cells. We have uh, the bacteria is unicellular. The, the bacteria, and that is important because I'm going to tell you some considerations, okay? Let me, let me cut. I don't want to, I want to see more. I like to see faces. Some of you are in the darkness, but it's okay. I can still see you. Okay. All right, got it. Okay, so we have... Uh, two types, two groups, the prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Okay, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. See, yes, I want to go. Prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Can you just three days in a row? Just a moment, please. Okay, uh, so we have the prokaryotes and the eukaryotes. Pro means before of, okay? So, uh, eu, eu means true. What it means karyot? Karyot is the key word here. Karyot means cell, the nuclear membrane. The nuclear membrane. So, what is the nuclear membrane? Is the membrane that forms the nucleus. The nucleus is like a balloon, inside a balloon. So, that balloon, the touch the balloon is a membrane that is the nuclear membrane the nuclear membrane so we have cells that contain that nuclear membrane and cells who do not con contain the nuclear membrane okay so the ones who do not contain nuclear membrane are going to be called the prokaryotes prokaryotes and who are the prokaryotes prokaryotes please just write it down in one word on the side Prokaryotes means bacteria. Prokaryotes, prokaryotes are but a bacteria. It's the bacteria. And the eukaryotes are actually the rest. You, we are mammals. We are animals too, mammals. And all mammals, all animals, animals in general, kingdom, animal kingdom, are going to have these eukaryote cells. All right, so what is the uh, thing here? The eukaryotes, the eukaryotes, they have a, a nuclear membrane. And this nuclear membrane is, inside, we have the DNA and the RNA. What do we have inside the nucleus? The DNA and the RNA. DNA and RNA. That is eukaryotes. Eukaryotes means true. Eu means, eu means, uh, in Portuguese, right? Eu means see, yes. Eu, eu is in Portuguese, right? <laughs> but in Latin, it yes. comes from the Latin, Latin, uh, the Latin uh, language. It means true. Okay, eu karyot. Karyot means nuclear membrane. Nuclear membrane. So that is you and me. You and me. You and me. So we have eukaryotes. We are eukaryotes. The prokaryotes are going to have. A similar structure, but without the nuclear membrane. Tell me one thing. Somebody can tell me. The prokaryotes, they contain DNA, RNA, yes or no? Good try. Uh, I think so, but... Um, 
tell me, the DNA is needed to cell division or no? Yes or no? You need to have DNA in order to divide the cell? Yeah. Yes, correct, right? Mm -hmm. The DNA is need, always need to be present in order to have the cell division. Okay? The bacteria multiply, yes or no? Yes. 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 So they have DNA or no? Okay. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just to complete the idea, the bacteria do not have the nuclear membrane. I didn't say they don't have nucleus and DNA. They okay. have, they do not have just the nuclear mm -hmm. membrane. Okay. But the DNA is still present in the in the bacteria. So the bacteria have DNA. The bacteria have DNA. Bacteria have DNA. So in conclusion, the prokaryotes that are the bacteria, mm -hmm. all the organelles are like a chicken soup all over, are spread out all over the cytoplasm, all over. Meantime, the eukaryote, we have a more organized way. Okay, is that clear or no, please? Yes. Okay. Uh, all right, so one more thing. Please, do you, do you uh, eat? Yes. Do you yeah. drink water? Yes. Uh -huh. Do you pee? Yes. 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 Do you poo? Yeah. Yes. Do you pass gas? Yes. 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 Do you reproduce? Yes. 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 So all these characteristics are in the bacteria. bacteria. So the bacteria is is eating, is 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 uh, drinking, is pooing, is pee pee, is reproducing, is, is make gas, farting. The right. bacteria don't fart. Okay. So that is actually all the all the all the characteristics of a living organism can be uh, seen in one only cell, one only cell. All right, so is that clear? Now, uh, yes. if you see here that uh, we have uh, for at least 4 billion years of Earth existence, 4 billion, 4 billion. And this is a lot of, a lot, a lot of years, right? And the ones who developed first, were the bacteria in the in earth the bacteria was developing first in the earth and this in the uh, in the earth after so many thousands of years why the bacteria is still bacteria and do not develop into more more elaborate organisms like we like we are why is still bacteria is still bacteria after so many thousands and billions of years why because that is what they need to survive. They don't need more. They are satisfied. They can live in the way they are. Right? So that is part of evolution. So in other, in other words, uh, simple organisms can survive because they don't need more. So uh, oh, simple is enough. So where is the word here? Just a moment. Uh, okay. Simpler is better for the survival of, of a species. So the simple way, if they found a simple way to survive, that is going to be like that. So that's why bacteria still as bacteria and do not evolve into more elaborate organisms. So let's go back. Okay. So listen to this. Prokaryos and eukaryos. Eukaryos is again prokaryos versus eukaryotes. So prokaryotes are more in number than eukaryotes. So there is many more bacteria in the world than 100 times or 1,000 times the number of people in the, or animals together. So there is ma many more bacteria in the in Earth than uh, 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 eukaryotes, uh, uh, bacteria. But uh, uh, pro uh, prokaryotes are the oldest organism by billions and billions of years. Yes, these guys, they were before us here. They was appearing in the Earth before us. There's more, more prokaryotes than eukaryotes combined. Com, uh, uh, my, uh, there are more prokaryotes than all the eukaryotes, uh, living organisms combined. So many more bacteria, so a huge amount of bacteria. All right, so what are the prokaryotes? Bacteria again, and 
are the uh, eukaryotes are the rest of organisms in here. So bacteria is unique. B bacteria is a prokaryote. So I'm going to give you some uh, considerations that probably are going to be better better for you to, to understand. All right. So prokaryote bacteria number one. Eukaryotes. Eukaryotes are the rest. The rest are you, me, animals, plants, fungi. All these are eukaryotes. So they have a nuclear membrane. Nuclear membrane. Period. One thing I want you to get from this is, and you will tell me conclusion, please. Give me conclusion, okay? So if I tell you the bacteria in average, by the way, from all the bacteria that exist in the in the world, only about one to two percent of bacteria attack human body. Not all the bacteria are going to be affecting your body. There is bacteria, they don't care about, about our body. They don't need our body. They are happy doing, uh, actually eating, for example, they get from the light, energy from the light, energy from other bacteria, but not they don't need our, our body. But from all 100% of bacteria that exist, a species, different species, only 1% to 2% are going to be bacteria that can affect uh, uh, human, human body. Okay? Do you agree that? Yes. Okay. Uh, one more other thing I want to tell you. The conclusion I want you to tell me. Are you ready? Bacteria, in average, when they when is the case and they invade our body, are going to multiply about average every twenty minutes. Every twenty minutes. Yes. Cut your finger. Cut your finger. And you cut your finger, you have bacteria proliferating in your skin, and the bacteria is going to proliferate. Is going to duplicate every twenty minutes. What is your conclusion? Or what conclusion we can get from this? What is the application and conclusion that we can get? What about if I tell you? We need to identify the infection as earlier we can. Yes or no? Yeah. Right? Yes. Because if you if you if in the infection in the, if the infection is going to last longer, it's more difficult to destroy that army of bacteria. It's, it's easier to the, to fight against bacteria of twenty thousand bacteria versus 20 million bacteria, right? So you need to you need more time to to fight and actually a more dose, more medication, etc. Right? So there is more destruction. So there's more signs and symptoms. So conclusion the earliest you detect an infection or treat an infection, the the best results you will obtain. We got it? So you cannot pass an infection one or two days. As soon as you identify the infection, that needs to be treated. Because infection, infection, what does it mean infection? Infection means, in one of the descriptions is infection invasion. Infection invasion. Invasion. And when they when they're invade, they are going to literally kill your cells. Why they kill your cells? Why the bacteria like to kill your cells? It's like the hunter and the prey. The hunter, they are going to, the hunter is the bacteria and the prey are the normal cells. And why, why they kill the cells? Because they want to eat what is inside. So the nutrients that the, the cells are going to have are the food for these bacteria. We have invasion. Infection means invasion, destruction, and then these bacteria start to multiply, multiply. So that destruction is going to be in escalation, escalate. Okay. All right. So we okay with that? Yes. Summary here: a review. The prokaryotes do not have a nucleus, so nuclear membrane. The nuclear, mem but be careful with this. Because when I say there is no nucleus, and you say, oh, but we have in the nucleus, we have the DNA. So if they don't have nucleus, they don't have DNA. No, it's not true. They do not have the nuclear membrane. But the bacteria, yes, they have DNA. You, yourselves, 
eukaryotes, they have DNA. Yes, we have DNA. The only difference is that they do not have the nuclear membrane of that in the body. Right? It's as I mentioned, it's like a chicken soup. Oh, by the way, I'm going to bring chicken soup today. I think it's, it's good for the cold, right? You like chicken soup? Chicken soup with uh, I put um, some uh, ginger and some um, mm -hmm. lemon at the end with, oh, yeah, very good, very good. Okay, so chicken soup, don't forget about the prokaryotes, please, okay? All right. All right. So they are much smaller, more ancient, because Asian, more ancient, right? More primitive. But more primitive, that does mean that it's not satisfying their needs. So that's why it's a conclusion here, simple, is simpler is better for survival of the species. So that is evolution, uh, the survival of the species. All right, so let's keep moving. So these cells, these bacteria, and these um, and these what uh, cells, your cells, are going to have what we call organelles. These organelles are all these elements that we have in our in our cell, in every single cell. How many how many cells we ha you have in your body? We have hundred trillion, hundred trillion cells. Imagine hundred trillion. It's a lot, right? For example, that I, I, I like to compare to is have something. The depth of the United States right now is about 25 trillion. 25 trillion. So we have four times more cells than the depth of the United States. So that is huge, 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 huge amount. Okay. I don't know if that's a good example, but anyhow, it came into my head. All right. All right, so let's go over these slides and all right. So here we have all the elements that we have in the eukaryote cell. Once more thing, write it down that please. The nucleus, the nucleus is the largest organelle on the cell. What is the nucle the largest organelle on the cell? Is the nucleus. 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 Excellent. So people make a confusion. They think that nucleus is not an organelle. Yes, it's an organelle, period. Okay, organelle will be the mitochondria, lysosome, etc., etc., as we are going to see now. Okay, look at this. Here we have a nice view. Well, let's make it nice. This is going to be your entertainment at home. When you don't have to do anything, you go to this slide and you're going to check what is number one, what is number two, what is number three, what is number four, and the answers are on the back. So that is what we are going to talk one by one. Uh, there is something that I'm not going to make uh, a remarks like endosome or like, uh, for example, uh, peroxisomes. So those are extra. I'm not going to ask about that. Only what I'm going to mention in the next slides, okay? But for review, you're going to use this at home and you're going to just test yourself. All right, so let's talk about the cytoplasmatic membrane. The cytoplasmatic membrane is the cell membrane, in other words cell membrane. So it's a plasma plasma membrane, plasmatic membrane, cytoplasmatic membrane, cell membrane, whatever you want to call it, is the same. Cytoplasmatic membrane. And it's composed by phospholipid bilayer. So I put a header, open eyes, open ears. Okay? Conclusion about this. I want you to write down this. Number, uh, this is the conclusion. What are the main components of the cytoplasm? The main, see, well, you can see the statement. And now how I, I give you the question. So it's a little bit pers uh, a, uh, pers uh, angle, right? So that's what I want you to answer. So in dif the same statement, you can I can ask you a different way. So the main components of the cell membrane are phospholipids and proteins, period. Phospholipids and proteins are the main components of the cell membrane. What are, are the main components of the cell membrane? It are the proteins and the phospholipids. 
falls for lipids, falls for lipids, falls for lipids, falls for lipids. You know, it's, it's amazing. You know how many, how many, how many, how many uh, types of proteins we have in our body? Different types. So tip, type protein A, B, C, whatever. So we have about half million different type of proteins in your body. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? And every single cell, every single cell, every single cell contain about 40 million, 35 to 40 million, million proteins. So it's like the, the number of, let's imagine California is a cell, California is a cell, each individual is a protein. So that is the amount of proteins that we have in every single cell, approximately. Nice, right? You you like? Okay, okay. Anyhow, I, I I found interesting that. Anyhow, so what is cytoplasm? Cytoplasm. Listen to this. Cytoplasm is composed ninety nine percent of water. So all the elements that are in between. Listen to this very careful. All the elements are in between the the cell membrane and the nuclear membrane, that space between the nuclear membrane and the, and the cytoplasmatic membrane, that is called cytoplasm. That is called cytoplasm. So what is cytoplasm? Cytoplasm is the, uh, is the area between the cell membrane and the nuclear membrane. You okay with that? Okay, can we go, can we keep going? Yeah. All right, so here we have, this is the nuclear membrane, if you see here. By the way, look at it, the nuclear membrane, they have like openings, right? See, can you have the holes there? Yeah, that is normal. And the space or the area between the cell membrane and the and the uh, nuclear membrane, that is called cytoplasm, cytoplasm, okay? So cytoplasma do not include the nucleus. So the cytoplasm is, cytoplasm is the space, the area that is in between the nucleus and the cell membrane, period. You okay with that? When, it, when we include the, 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 the nucleus, it's called protoplasm. I don't care about that, so I'm not... In the past, I was teaching that, but I don't see anywhere in the future you're going to use that word. So just cytoplasma is very important. Okay? All right? Oh, okay. So what is this? <coughs> Tell me, what do you think what, what is the nucleus? <coughs> the nucleus. This is a, a plant cell. How many of you saw at the first saw that this is the nucleus? Right? <laughs> this is not the nucleus. The nucleus is here. All right, so what is the importance of, what is in, the important to know about this? Just to show you, this is probably the last time somebody is going to show you this. So this is a plant cell. Eat a mango, eat a banana, eat a, a strawberry. So all these cells are going to be like this. And we have here the back wall, the back wall. This back wall is the storage. And that is where, for example, you eat a fruit, it's sweet. That sweet, the carbohydrates are coming from the back wall of the, of the fruit and vegetable. All right, so let's go here. I want just to uh, check here in this view, this portion. Uh, can you see this small line here? This one. Can you see this small line? Yes. All right, so that is the cytoplasmatic membrane. Very thin line. So can you see this is like a very narrow white line here, right? Right? Yeah. All right, so that is the cytoplasmatic membrane. Cytoplasmatic membrane. But now, this is a plant. Remember, this is a plant. And the plant is going to cover in addition by this thick structure. This thick structure. Can you see this one? Yes. That is called the cell wall. 
that is called the cell wall. So the cell wall. So in addition to have the, uh, the, the cytoplasmatic membrane, you're going to have a cell wall. The cell wall is like a very hard structure. And you know what is this cell wall? That cell wall is that cell wall is the cellulose. That mm -hmm. that uh, cell wall is the cellulose. Is the fiber, the fiber. That is where is the fiber. Okay. So the fiber of the plant, the fiber that you eat when you eat something with fiber, all right? So you are eating plant and vegetables. The plant of vegetables they have is those are eukaryotes. They have organelles. They have the nucleus, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They have the cell membrane. And surrounding the cell membrane, we have the fiber or cellulose, or called the cell wall. Cell wall, and that is when you eat it, you crush it, you actually break down the the, the cellulose wall, the fiber. You are crushing the back wall, and the juice is coming. The sweets, the flavors of each plant of each fruit is different, right? All right, so we okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay. Okay, so look at this. We have an intricate situation here. If you see here on the left upper uh, cartoon, we have the, the, the nucleus, and you see very well, and surrounded by some structure. It's like a labyrinthic area. So this labyrinthic area is the endoplasmatic reticulum. I will show you in a few moments. Let's start with the beginning, the nucleus. The nucleus is going to contain the DNA the DNA, DNA. They are going to form, when the cell is going to be divide, is going to enter into cell division, the DNA, that is the double helix, double helix are going to be cut in pieces form each piece a chromosome. That only chromosomes appears or divide the DNA when the cell is ready to multiply or when it's needed or when it's required to multiply. Okay. In addition to that, the nucleus are going to contain what we call the uh, nucleolus, the nucleolus that is located the RNA. All right. I'm going to make it very simple here. Look at this. Oh, no. Uh, okay. So here we have, here we have the cell. Here is the nucleus going to be a little bit longer and here we have another structure here another this small structure is called the nucleolus nucleolus and this big structure is called the nucleus all right so the nucleus contain the dna here and the nucleolus here contain the rna so nucleolus is produced local. So where it's coming from, remember when we were talking about the transcription, transcription, that the RNA messenger is going to copy a piece of the DNA. So where is coming from this RNA? This RNA is coming from the nucleolus. Nucleolus. You okay with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let's go here. Here we have... I will tell you here, we have here the DNA and where the RNA messenger, and that is where it's going to happen, that transcription. Remember the transcription? Remember? Yeah. No? You yes. Oh, yeah, okay, yes, okay. So we have the transcription. I'm going to transcription, yes, in case. Transcription. Transcription is when the RNA uh, is going to copy that gene of the DNA. One is already copied. It's like a rewriting of the recipe. What happened? The RNA messenger is going to go out from the nucleus, and they go to this area that is the endoplasmatic reticulum. Endoplasmatic reticulum endoplasmatic reticulum there you are 
endoplasmatic reticulum, endoplasmatic reticulum. All this, listen, I'm going to write it down. All this is endoplasmatic reticulum. All this is endoplasmatic reticulum. All this is endoplasmatic reticulum. All right, so we are going to see the difference now. So why it looks so different here? We have some red areas here, some red spots, and here is not red spots at all. So this, these dots you see here are going to be called the ribosomes. Those are the ribosomes, 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 ribosomes. These ribosomes, when the, I, I will try to make it more obvious here with, I don't know, with blue, probably blue can help. When the RNA, when the, when the transcription already happened, the RNA messenger is going to travel to the to the endoplasmatic reticulum. It's not seen very well. So what color I can use? Yellow? Yeah, yellow is better. So RNA messenger is here in this, in this labyrinth. The RNA messenger, RNA messenger. And they're going to put here the amino acids. That is one after another. That is where it's curry, we call that translation. Translation. Previous inside the nucleus was having that transcription. They are going to pass into the translation where in the endoplasmatic reticulum. In this endoplasmatic reticulum is where we have the ribosomes. These ribosomes are the ones who, like I told you, go to the market, you have carts, everybody's helping you to put ingredients together. So everybody got with a cart. The cart is giving you the lettuce, the cart is giving you the onions, the cart is giving you other cart, the potatoes, whatever, right? Each cart giving you an ingredient. These ingredients represent the amino acids. And where they go, they go and give it to you. You are the RNA messenger that produce the translation. So is the ribosomes, the carts, the cart that is bringing the ingredients to complete the recipe. Those are what is do, what that is what is doing the ribosome to do the translation. Translation. So without ribosomes, you don't have translation. You need to have the ribosomes to in order to have the translation. There is different type of ribosomes. I don't want to go on that. The ribosome that is coming from the nucleus after the transcription is going to stay there like this. It's going to stay. This is the RNA messenger, RNA messenger. Then we have the ribosomes that are going to come with a cart and complete the sequence of ingredients that you have in your recipe. Is that clear or no, please? Yes. Everybody's clear on that? Yes. Please, please. yes. Okay. So now, after that, you already know that you have the primary protein, the primary protein, they are going to have the secondary protein, and they are going to travel here towards the, the other endoplasmatic reticulum. That is called the smooth re endoplasmatic reticulum. Why is called it smooth? It's smooth because do not have no ribosomes in the no ribosomes. See, there is that's why it's naked, like naked uh, endoplasmatic reticulum, and here. The endoplasmatic reticulum, where they have the ribosomes, are called the rough, the rough endoplasmatic reticulum. Why? Because they contain the rough R ribosomes, the ribosomes. Now, question is, wh why is we have we, why we have two types of endoplasmatic reticulum, the rough and the smooth? The rough is to complete the recipe, and why the smooth? Endoplasmatic reticulum is smooth. Somebody can tell me. Why they don't have the ribosomes on the surface of the endoplasmatic reticulum? Why? What are doing the ribosomes? Tell me in your own words, what are doing Translate. the ribosomes? The translation. Translation. The translation. The and tell me, the translation already completed in the rough in the plasmatic reticulum yes. yes yes so when they go to the smooth do we need these uh, 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 ribosomes or not 
No. 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 So that's why he's naked. I mean, that's, that's why he's without a ribosome. Make sense or no? Yes. Okay. Yes. So now, these, these endoplasmatic reticulum are going to uh, carry the primary protein, secondary protein, the tertiary protein, the quaternary protein. So, and that means complicate shape. So, oh, what is this? Okay. So, this is the RNA messenger that is doing the translation. And what happened? You see that there is cards that are bringing, are bringing the uh, uh, amino acids to the sequence of the RNA. So, what are those cards? The rib ribosomes. Ribosomes. Ribosome. Excellent. Very good. All right. So let's talk about the Golgi apparatus. Listen, the Golgi apparatus is is uh, the Golgi apparatus is at the end or after the endoplasmatic reticulum. Why? Look at this. So you have the primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary protein, and these proteins are going to be located in the Golgi apparatus. They're going to be just there. there. And then the cell will decide, we, do we need this protein? We need the protein need to stay or the protein need to go out? Depends what you what the cells need. But the Golgi apparatus is, is where mostly of the proteins are going to be activated. When that is the, the to refine the shape of the protein. So Golgi apparatus is the is the area where mostly of the proteins are going to complete their activation. You okay with that? Yes. Okay. All right. All right, centrioles, in the, uh, I, I'm going to talk about centrioles right now. Centrioles are going to be tubular structures that enter into the cell division. All right, so what is this? Imagine that this square that you see here is a cell. And when you have the cell, you have the nucleus here with the DNA. And what happened when the cell is going to multiply, the nucleus disappear. The DNA is going to be cut in pieces cut it in pieces and produce the chromosomes like this. Then the chromosomes, after that, they are going to multiply. They are going to multiply, duplicate. So now you will have like this. And they are going to be on the, on the what we call in the middle of the cell. The, that is the, the metaphase, but I'm not going to talk about that. So what happened here? So once you have the cell, Look at this. The cell is going to divide. But in order to, in order to have another cell with the same number of chromosomes, you need to first duplicate your chromosome. So how are you going to divide? Right? If you have, for example, 10 chromosomes and you divide without multiplying the chromosome, the other cell do not have 10, 10 chromosomes. So you need, first of all, to duplicate your own chromosomes to give split half and a half in order to have at the end two identical cells. You okay with that? Hello? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, uh, tell me, uh, uh, it's time for a break? What time is it? 11.20. It's time for a break or no? Tell yeah, me. yeah, it's not, uh, yeah. about an hour. Yeah. Okay, so just help me with that. I can see because your response are getting weaker and weaker and weaker. All right, so now that's what I can tell. So I will see you at 11.30, 30, uh, 31. Okay. okay. All right, see you then. See ya.
Hello, everyone. So please, the camera is on. Here. Hello. Yeah. All right. So everybody is clear about the prokaryotes and eukaryotes. By the way, I want just to summarize here: the prokaryotes are bacteria, and the bacteria do not have the nuclear membrane the membrane of the nucleus, but the rest is still there. Okay, so that is what in eukaryotes, the only difference, eukaryotes, the eukaryotes, yourselves, myself, the only difference is that we have the nuclear membrane. You okay with that? Okay. Yes. All right, so let's, let's continue. By the way, I'm recording, right? Yeah, I'm recording. This. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The centrioles uh, that I, I was mentioning here are going to be active, are going to be active, are going to be active during the cell division. Just remember, I, I was telling you that we have the nuc this is the eukaryote cell, your cell, my cell, and you have the DNA here, the DNA. So what happens when it enters in cell division? When they enter in cell division, that is just part of the life of the cell, so there's a moment that they're going to divide, they're going to basically disappear the nuclear membrane. And that DNA starts to divide it in pieces. These pieces are going to conform from that DNA that you have here. They are going to cut in pieces and they are going to organize in the form of chromosomes. I, the chromosome is like this, right? So the, but, uh, in order not to take too much time, I'm doing this. Okay? Now, the cell, they, when they divide, they need to create a cell with the same number of chromosomes the same number of chromosomes. So that's why there is a moment that the chromosomes are going to multiply, are going to multiply. Then the cells are going to divide. They are going to cut in two, and you have now one cell with equal number of chromosomes, two cells. You okay? All right, we okay with that? Now, yes. the centrioles, Centrioles are going to, uh, what I call these are the cowboys. Cowboys. The centrioles are the cowboys. Why? Because the centrioles are going to be located here and here on the opposite side. And they are going to, the chromosomes will be the cows. And the centrioles, what they are doing is to have some projections, some lining, some fibers that are going to lace each cow lace each cow they're going to lace each, each cow they're going to lace each cow centrioles are going to are going to lace each chromosome each chromosome they're going to lace each chromosome and then what happened they're going to pull back 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 so in this direction in order to bring the chromosomes to one side of the cell in each in each side so they are going to basically after that they are going to divide and the cells you have two cells now with equal chromosomes equal chromosomes you okay with that yes okay all right so the mitochondria the mitochondria are the engines of the cell the mitochondria are going to be the mitochondria are going to be are going to graphic here look like a like an oyster <laughs> the mitochondria look like an oyster okay so the mitochondria are going to be the engines that is where you produce the ATPs ATPs are going to produce inside the mitochondria inside the mitochondria so if this is a cell, the mitochondria, this is the this is the nucleus with the DNA, etc. And we have the mitochondria here all over the cytoplasm. These engines are the ones who produce the ATPs. What is ATP? ATP is the energy. For example, 
you have a factory, a factory, a factory. The factory will be the cell, right? There is a factory that produces, for example, one product. Other factories produce 100 products, okay? So obviously the factory who are need to produce more products are going to require more engines, means more mitochondria. Is that clear or no? For example, the engine of a small factory and the engine and the engine of a big factory. Who has more engines? The big factory, no or no? Factory. The big factory, right? Right. Excellent. Why? Because they need more energy because they produce many more products than the factory that produces only one. You okay with that? Yes. 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 Okay. So, and these mitochondria, so that means that are going to be in different number according to the cell function. If the cell function is to produce few things, they are going to have less mitochondria. But the one who produce more, more products are going to need more mitochondria because obviously they need more energy. The best example I'm going, going to give you is the liver, the liver. The liver is what we call the big factory, the big factory of the body. Why the big factory of the body? Because the liver is going to produce 512 uh, uh, substances, products, let's say products. So 512 products. So each cell, each cell of the liver, I'm exaggerating liver cells, are going to have a lot of mitochondria in the cytoplasm. These go from 1,000 to 2,000. I'm not going to ask that, but just to give you an idea that we have about 1,000 to 2,000 engines per cell, every cell. The liver is one of the highest uh, number with mitochondria, mitochondria. And now, what is the largest, uh, what is the cell who has the highest number of mitochondria is going to be the ovum, the ovum, the ovum. The ovum. Yes, the ovum is the one who contains more mitochondria. So in these mitochondria, conclusion, what I want to know about this slide, is the mitochondria inside the mitochondria are being produced the ATPs, the ATPs, the adenosine triphosphate. Remember, the, between the second and the third phosphate is where we have the highest amount of energy. So these ATPs are using for all the activities of the cell. You okay with that? Uh, I have a question. In males, they don't have ovum, so. Well, oh, in males, yeah, we don't have ovum, yes, you're right. So what's the highest producing uh, mitochondria uh, organ uh, in a male? We, we have a lot of mitochondria, but not as many in the spermatozoids. In the spermatozoids, the, the tail, so the, I'm a spermatozoid. I am a spermatozoid. Here we have my head, where is the neck, the neck and the tail. The body, my body is the tail, and my body is doing this, moving. That locomotion, they need a lot of mitochondria. So spermatozoids, they have mitochondria too, right? And the ovum is the one in all, human, in all humans, the highest number of mitochondria is the ovum, is the ovum, okay? You okay with that? Yeah, so liver in men, and liver has the most in men, right? Mitochondria. No, no. Uh, in in spermatozoids men. still having more. Sperm has more. more. Okay, I'm just wondering. Okay, thanks. Yeah. No, that's okay. <laughs> that's it. Okay. All right, so let's keep moving. All right, so who, who is this? The Golgi apparatus. What is doing here? The, what is the function? Is to get mature the proteins. Okay. What does it mean to get pro the, uh, uh, the process mature? Means to have the shape, the 3D configuration and the quaternary configuration. That is where the proteins are going to complete the maturity. Activation. Exactly, the activation of the protein. You okay with that? All right, so the lysosomes. Lysosomes are uh, inclusions that are organelles that are located inside the cytoplasm. And these are like small bubbles, bubbles uh, floating like small balloons. Imagine your house 
you are the cell, the cell, uh, you are the nucleus, and you see floating balloons. Those small floating balloons are the lysosomes. These lysosomes are going to be important because they contain, contain enzymes. I'm going to give you one example. Here we have, for example, the neutrophil. This is a neutrophil. Neutrophil is, is what is a, a white cell. The neutrophil, the nucleus is going to be like a weird nucleus. This is the nucleus. This is the nucleus typically of the neutrophil. And a polymorphum. Okay, anyhow. And you have lysosomes here. All floating lysosomes. These lysosomes are small balloons that are floating with enzymes in, inside. So there is a bacteria here. And the bacteria, what is doing the neutrophil? The neutrophil is going to eat the bacteria. So the bacteria is getting inside because the uh, nitrophil is going to do something like this. They are going, the bacteria is here. So they are going to basically eat it. They are going to expand the cytoplasm membrane, are going to surround the bacteria, and then incorporate later on into the, in, inside the neutrophil. Once the bacteria is here, the lysosomes are going to release the enzymes that destroy the bacteria. Okay? So that's why lysosome is said contain digestive enzymes. Digest enzymes, digestion means break down, to break down. And this breaking down means that they're going to destroy the, uh, the bacteria when it's inside the cell. Be okay with that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, the back wall. So remember here, open eyes, open ears. The back wall. The back wall is a container organelle. The container organelle, the back wall basically is going to be, for example, in, uh, in uh, we have here, this is a cell. This is a cell. All this is a cell. And here we have a back wall. This back wall is huge in this case because we are talking about adipose tissue, adipose cells, adipose cells. So that is basically a container. What is going to contain? They can contain, for example, a fatty acids. They can contain a triglycerides. They can contain a glycogen in case of carbohydrates. So back wall is the storage area. So they are going to store these, these elements. Depends the back wall, depends the cell. The back wall could be smaller or bigger. So here, for example, here we have the adipocyte cells. Adipocyte. Adipo means fat. Is the fat cell fat cell. Site means cell. So it's, they're telling you a fat cell. And here you have the adipocyte. Look at this. The cell is this. I'm going to draw here. This is a cell. One adipocyte. Here is the nucleus. This is the nucleus here. And all this white is the back wall. And occupy basically most of the space of the cell because the fat cells are going to store fat, okay? So that's why this back wall, in this case, is huge. In other cells, the back wall can be smaller, depends. So conclusion, back wall is a container organelle. Oh my God, why I have that? Okay, so that is the cell. So this is one cell. So these very dark areas here, this dark, dark, and dark, those are the nucleus. And this, for example, here, let's make it here. This is one cell. This is the nucleus here. And the rest is the back wall that is containing fat. So everything depends on what cell we are talking about. The importance of this class and what I'm going to ask you is what are the type of organelles we have? You need to mention all of them. And you need to know what is the function, very punctual, what is the Functional, what is the function of each organelle? So this is already what we already mentioned. Here we have a very nice view of the cell membrane. As I mentioned in the beginning, and I repeat for a certain time, is the cell membrane main components are going to be the phospholipids and the proteins. Phospholipids and proteins. Proteins. So where is the protein here? Here, one protein here, protein here, protein here, protein here protein here. Here we have the fatty acids, the heads and the tails, fatty acids. 
Obviously, this is not the only components of the cell membrane. There's other components like carbohydrates, like cholesterol too, but the main, 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 main components of the cell membrane will be the phospholipids and the, and the what? And the proteins, proteins. Do you agree with that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, I want to tell you this uh, cell membrane is a double, it's a bilayer membrane, as we know. Bilayer membrane is the same to say double layer membrane. Double layer membrane is the same to say bilayer membrane. Bilayer, by this two. And this membrane is not like a like a, like a stone. It's not like a rigid like a metal. No, the cell membrane is like silicon. It's like moving. So they're actually not so they're not so stiff. They're actually basically like wavy like a silicon. Okay, so that is one. Imagine that cell membrane is moving, like a wave, like a wave. Like a jelly? Like a jelly, yes, yes. All right, so here we have uh, some of the elements that we were talking about. Just to remark here that the cytoplasm, cytoplasm is the area between the cell membrane here up to the, up to the here, the cell membrane of the nucleus uh, towards the until the cell membrane of the of the cell. So all this is the cytoplasm. All this is cytoplasm, except the nucleus. All right. So where are the mitochondria? The mitochondria are located in the cytoplasm. Where is located the uh, where is located what the the lysosomes etc. Et in the cytoplasm. The nucleus is going to be located in the cytoplasm. Okay, immersed in the cytoplasm. All right, so here we have our oyster, that is what we call the our mitochondria, mitochondria. So here inside we have the uh, crystal galley, whatever uh, structures. I'm not going to go that. And this is the factory where you produce ATPs. ATP. ATPs. Now. In order to produce ATPs, the mitochondria, they need one element that is very important. This element is going to be the oxygen. They need oxygen in order to produce ATPs. So that is called the aerobic reaction, means that the ATPs, the mitochondria, they need oxygen. They need oxygen, oxygen, oxygen in order to produce the ATPs, okay? Here we have the lysosomes, and we call the catalase, but I'm not going to go more because I don't want to confuse you, but definitely just remember enzymes. Enzyme. They call enzymes that are going to digest bacteria, for example. For example. So they're the ones that are going to attack the bacteria, right? Exactly. So when the bacteria get into the cell, the cell... It's going, the lysosomes are going to come to the bacteria that is inside the cell already, already, and, uh, and release the enzymes and destroy the bacteria. The neutrophils is like, I call the ninjas. Why? Because the ninjas can kill bacteria right and left, right and left. They can kill 10 bacteria at the same time. Can you imagine? That's why they kill with the head, with the arm, with the shoulder, with everything, everything they can. And actually, the neutrophils, they have huge amount of lysosomes that are going to kill bacteria. These are the centrioles that I mentioned. So here is the cell. This is the cell. But the chromosomes are here. These are the chromosomes here. And the centrioles are going to go into the poles of the cell, poles, into the pole, extremes of the cell. And they are going to lace the cows, lace the chromosomes. And they are going to pull back in order to have the cell division. Now you have two cells after they pull by the centrioles. So what are doing the centrioles? Are participating in the cell division. That's all what I want. Participate in cell division. All right, so here we have, uh, I put it in colors, what, in order you to be uh, aware what we need to know about this and what they're going to ask you. 
in the midterm on the final exam and the quiz, they are going to be, some of these are going to be as a matching, as a match. So you must, some of them, not all of them, but you need to know all of, all of these uh, 11 elements that we just mentioned. Cell nucleus, nucleolus, ribosome, endoplasmatic reticulum, etc. Okay, so we already talked about all of them already, right? Or not? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so just uh, one more time. Cell nucleus, the nucleus. What is the nucleus? Contain the, the unprotect the DNA. Yes, that's what nucleus membrane is. So contains basically the DNA. Number two, the nucleolus, nucleolus are the ones who produce the ribosomes, especially the, the RNA messenger, the RNA messenger, the RNA messenger. The ribosomes, ribosomes are the cards on Segway, are going to translate uh, MR, uh, messenger RNA into polypeptide cha chain. What is polypeptide? Polypeptide, poly means multiple. Peptide yeah. means uh, amino acids. Yes. Uh, number four, endoplasmatic reticulum. Endoplasmatic reticulum is B, navigate the RNA messenger out of the nucleus to meet with the ribosomes, nice or not. Okay, you okay with that? Yes. Number, number five, Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus are going to activate uh, uh, new proteins, tertiary and quaternary proteins. Cytoplasm, where is a cytoplasm? Cytoplasma fluid that serve as medium for most chemical reactions. That is all the region that is in between the nuclear membrane and the cell membrane, that is the cytoplasm. And that is the place where most chemical reactions are going to occur inside the cell. The back wall serves as a container. Mitochondria are produced most of the ATPs because you're going to learn later on about the glycolysis that is coming, very beautiful topic but the majority of, of ATPs are produced in the mitochondria. Lysosomes are going to contain digestive enzymes and the centrioles are going to participate in the cell division. They are going to be activated in the cell division as we already explained. Okay, so we have uh, different kinds of proteins embedded in the phospholipid layer. So mostly of these proteins are can be any place, but mostly of them are located in the in the cell membrane. We have we have uh, half million different type of proteins in the whole body, different types. I didn't say number types types, and each cell each cell is going to contain about ten to thirty million proteins. It's a lot of proteins for the house, right? It's like I'm telling you the bricks of your house. You have 10 million bricks, right? So that is located in the cell walls, mostly of them. And that is what is uh, the importance of the protein. Proteins, as you remember, can be enzymes. Proteins can be hormones. Proteins can be in new cells, right? Like immunoglobulins, antibodies, right? Etc. And these are actually, uh, uh, proteins are everywhere. And the most uh, uh, common area are the, uh, the cytoplasmatic membrane or cell membrane. They are going to work as a receptors. The, yes, the receptors. Receptors, just to refresh you again, receptors is going to be like the keyhole of your house. The keyhole of your house. You have the key. The key is the hormone or the enzyme or whatever you want is the allergen or bacteria or whatever, is the one who contain, uh, the key is the one who can open the door of your house. Receptor is a protein. Receptor is the keyhole of your house. Okay? All right. They can be as a gates, gates, channels. So the, the door of your house is a protein too. The door of your house. In order to get all the amino acids, the fatty acids, the monosaccharides that are the monomers that can be absorbed or passed into the cell, they need a door to get into. And that is basically a protein, okay? Gate of channels, surface proteins, receptors. 
So proteins are every, every, everywhere. All right, so we can be that? Yes. All right. Yes. All right, so I want just you to pay attention and please help me with the time because I uh, we are going to have next time is the lunch break. But this part is crucial for many things you will understand uh, uh, later on. If you want to understand diarrhea, you want to understand hyperglycemia, you want to understand many things, you need to know this. And for this, I'm going to make it easier. And, and actually, uh, I'm going to repeat probably two or three times. Okay? All right, so let's get started. So today, uh, we are going to continue with the membrane transportation. Membrane transportation. The membrane transportation. So how? they are going to transport elements from outside of the cell into the cell. And for that, they need to pass a barrier that is the cell membrane. Or they can be opposite. They can go out from the cell, uh, from inside to outside of the cell. So that is two, they need a membrane transportation. How, this trans how the oxygen can get into your cells how the carbon dioxide can go out from your cells, how the amino acids can get into the intestinal cells, how, what, what, what is, uh, how the carbohydrates are going to be absorbed, how they can get inside the cell member, inside the cell, through the passing the cell membrane. So all of these are going to be talking right now. At the end, we will see uh, uh, we are going to talk osmosis, that is huge, and actually pay attention. So let's start. So for this, I'm going to just classify the membrane transportation into. All right, so... Uh, okay. There you are. Okay. Membrane transportation. Transportation. We're going to, we are going to divide, in, divide it in two simple things. We are going to see the passive transportation, passive transportation, and the active transportation. Active transportation. What means passive transportation? Try to nail it now in your mind. Passive transportation is a transportation that do not need energy. No need of energy. No energy need. There is no need for energy. They don't consume ATPs. Do not use ATPs. There are actually no energy needed. But the active transportation, they need energy to transport one place to another place. Okay? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. For this... For this, you need to know we are going to use the, we are going to learn the, what we call the universal law. The universal law. Okay, one more time, let's do this. Universal law. What is doing the universe? What is telling you the universal law? Oh, the law of the universe. Oh, wow, right? The law of the universe. So that means that everything needs everything need to be in equilibrium. What is that? Okay, equilibrium. Balance. <laughs> okay. Everything needs to be in equilibrium. So what that means needs to be in equilibrium. That, uh, in context, to talk about what we are going to talk now, is that everything need to, everything, in other words, everything need to be to be yeah, in equal concentrations. Yeah. Equal concentrations, okay? So everything need to be in equal concentrations. So if that area is not, uh, have high concentration and the other area is low concentration, they are going to basically 
uh, in certain moment the re, they are going to restructure, redistribute the molecules to have equal number of molecules in each area. I will tell you one example. All right, so let's suppose that this is a room. We are in a room, okay? We are in a room and you are here. This is you. Uh, this is me. This is me. And the big the room is the room is big, okay? Okay? Now yes. in some moment I go into light a cigarette. I'm smoking my cigarette. Okay? Tell me, in the first few seconds, can you smell the smoke that I'm smoking or no? Not yet. Oh. Not yet, right? Not yet. Excellent. But I am still smoking, smoking, smoking. You cannot see me anymore. I'm, I'm surrounded by a cloud of smoke. And then you leave the room for less than uh, half an hour. And what happened? The smoke is going to start distributing all over the room equally. Yes or no? Yes. So when you come back, yes. you will say, oh my God, you were smoking. Yes or no? Yes. Right? Yes. So that means that at the beginning, at the beginning of the situation here, I was having high concentration of smoke, but here we have low concentration. So that's why the smoke start to get going from high concentration to low concentration. At the end, all the room is going to have equal concentration of smoke. You okay with that? Yes. Yes. Right. So let's read now the universal law. Everything needs to be in equilibrium. Another way to say it, everything needs to be in equal concentration. You okay with that? Yes. That is the principle that we are going to use for to do the membrane transportation. All right. So knowing that, we are going to continue. Okay, the difference here with the cell membrane is the here we have, I'm going to draw a cell membrane very fast here. Cell membrane, 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 cell membrane. Okay, and these are the fatty acids, etc. I'm not going to draw the proteins, but you know they're there. And this is outside. And this is inside the cell. Okay, you follow me? All right. So let's suppose that you have, for example, uh, here an element that is that is like this. Okay, uh, let's make it one element, element A. How many we have? Many, many of them, right? And from this same substance, we have this amount only inside. So where is the high concentration? Outside. Outside. And the low concentration inside. Following the universal law, the molecules who are, this should be outside and inside, should be in equilibrium, should be in equal concentrations. So that's why the molecules are going to pass the cell membrane, pass the cell membrane. At the end, you're going to have equal number. So we have one put less here, and we are going to have some of here. So at the end, they have equal number of molecules in and out. You okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So I want you to get ready because we are going to put some names that are need to know. We need to know. All right. So these molecules depends the size of the molecules. If the size are small enough, is imagine that these phospholipids are people. These are people, 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 the heads and the whatever, right? So people are there and the, the molecule is so tiny that the molecule is going to tell, excuse me, excuse me, I'm going to pass, squeeze, squeeze, and then I'm going to pass. And they, they go easily passing to the other side. They can go from out to in or from in to out, okay? So depends of the size of the molecule. You okay with that? Yes. Yes. Okay. And that size of the molecule that are very tiny are going to be, for example, the oxygen. The oxygen. The oxygen is so tiny 
that they can tell the phospholipids, they say, excuse me, you know what, I'm going to pass, sorry, I'm going to pass, 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 and they are going to go inside the cell. So this transportation are, are, are following the universal law that are going to take high concentration molecules to low concentration areas. And that is uh, because of this law and the molecules are very small, they don't need energy to pass. They don't need energy to pass. They are going to pass just following the universal law because they are so tiny, tiny, tiny molecules, they can pass in between the phospholipids without any problem. That is called the passive, passive transportation. <laughs> passive transportation. Okay, we got it? Yes. Now, yes. when you have, for uh, you will learn in the next class, the carbon dioxide, the carbon dioxide is coming from the metabolism of the, of the, of the nutrients. Just to tell you very simple. For example, you have your car. You have your car. You have a car. The car needs food. What is the food of the car? The fuel, the gas. Correct? Correct? Yes. Okay. So now, a, the car needs oxygen. Correct? Yes. The car needs oxygen or no? No. Yes. Yes. So oh, yes. you need oxygen. So you can turn your car under the water, go to the lake and see it turn to your car. You cannot. No. Right? Because, because the oxygen, the oxygen is going to produce the ignition of the of the fuel, right? We agree with that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when you use the fuel that the uh, the fuel that is the food and the oxygen that is need to burn that fuel, right? You're going to produce gas. The car produce gas exhaust, right? Yes or no? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. So, what is doing this? The cell is a car. The cell is your car, okay? The oxygen is going to make the, uh, react the nutrients to release energy. And that release of energy that are going to turn into ATPs, they have this product that is the carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide is produced inside the cell. And the carbon dioxide is going to go out because you have high concentration of carbon dioxide inside the cell and low concentration of carbon dioxide outside the cell. And that is the opposite. They are going to go carbon dioxide from high concentration to low concentration. And that's how the carbon dioxide is eliminated through the cell into the bloodstream and they go to the lungs and eliminate. All right, so in conclusion, passive transportation, these are going to be the, uh, the most important uh, uh, I will tell you the passive transportation are going to be subdivided in two. The simple diffusion and the facilitated diffusion. Don't worry, I'm going to make it simple. All right, so you have the passive transportation here. The passive transportation, they need, they do not need energy. We have simple diffusion and we have facilitated diffusion. The best example of simple diffusion is going to be the gas exchange. So simple diffusion, simple diffusion, simple diffusion is the gas exchange. Gas exchange of what? Oxygen and carbon dioxide. Okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. You okay with that? Yes. Yes. Okay. So that is what kind of what kind of transportation we talk about that is a membrane transportation. What kind of transportation is a passive transportation? Why is called passive transportation? Because they don't require energy. What is the classification of the passive transportation? Simple diffusion one and facilitate diffusion. The simple diffusion is going to be this gas exchange. Gas exchange. Gas exchange. You okay with that? And mostly the gas exchange are going to happen in the lungs. They can happen in the, in the blood, between the red blood cells and the, and the blood. So that is gas exchange, simple diffusion. 
You give me that? Yes. Yes. Excellent. So now, I don't like when people get quiet and silent because it looks to me that we are getting lost you in a way. Hopefully no. Hopefully no. No? Okay. No, Dr. G. Okay, okay. Don't. Okay. All right. So now let's talk about the facilitated diffusion. Facilitated diffusion. Facilitated diffusion is, as you say here, passive transportation, no energy, facilitated diffusion. In this facilitated diffusion, you're going to have basically the, the, here we have the cell membrane, the cell membrane. But in the case of facilitated diffusion, you're going to have a protein. You have a protein here. One protein here and another protein here. So this is a protein. This is outside, this is inside. So when you have, for example, a uh, big amount of, uh, of uh, glucose, for example, uh, they are going to, what you have, glucose are going to represent like this, glucose, 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 glucose. And here inside we have a little bit, two, three glucose, very poor in glucose. So what happened? Equal concentration. They go from high concentration to low concentration, but they need to pass through the a protein. Why is that? Because the glucose molecule is much bigger than the oxygen or carbon dioxide. So they need a gate. They need a portal of entry. And what they are doing is this. Okay, let me, no, I don't have anything here. All right, so let's suppose. Can you, can you see my hands? Can you see my hands? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's use your imagination, please. Imagination, everybody. So here we have the cell membrane. This is the cell membrane. Okay? This is the cell membrane. In between the cell membrane, we have one protein and another protein like this. Here is the cell membrane. So the proteins are immersed in the cell membrane. Are we okay with that? Okay, so this is outside and this is inside. Here, this pen is the glucose. The glucose is in high concentration outside. So what is doing the glucose in order to enter to the cell? They're going to do this. So high concentration to low concentration. And this is the cell membrane. Here is the protein. The proteins are going to be like one protein and another protein, two proteins like this. They're going to do this. Look at this. Can you see the pen? The glucose? No, I can't see it. You cannot? Mm. We can see your hands, but we can't see the pen. The pen? Let me see. Let me see. Oh my God. Okay. Let me lift it up a little bit. Let me, let me check in this screen. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, oh, okay, because they're too high. Okay, now. Yeah. All right. So this is a cell membrane. These are the proteins that immerse in the cell membrane. You follow me? Yes. yes. This is outside, this is inside. Outside, inside. This is the glucose. So now we have the cell membrane, the proteins like this, one protein here, another protein like a gate, and outside, inside, and the glucose is outside in high concentration. So what is happening is the glucose is going to do this. Look at this. Can you see how they get the, the glucose into my hands and they are going to open the proteins like this. Look at this. They are going to open. They are going to open, 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 open. And then when this going to do this, it's going to close and open the other portion. And what's happening with the glucose? The glucose yes. gets inside of the cell. You gave me that? Yes. So, thank you. That is the facilitate diffusion. That is called facilitate diffusion. So what is the best example of facilitate diffusion? It's going to be the absorption of the monomers. Yes, yeah, there you are. The absorption of the monomers. Absorption of the monomers. So that is how the cells are going to make the fatty acids, the amino acids, and the, and the what? And the, and the monosaccharides and make it the glucose 
in order to get into the cell. So what is the best example for facilitating diffusion is the absorption of the nutrients. Amino acids, monosaccharides, fatty acids. What is the best example of simple diffusion? The gas exchange. They do not need proteins to pass. They are going simple diffusion. They, they don't need proteins to pass. They are going to squeeze, excuse me, excuse me, I'm going to pass, I'm small enough, and I'm not going to bother anybody, boom, go in, inside the cell. Facility diffusion, facilitate diffusion, the molecules are bigger, so they need a gate, they need a door, and that gate are produced by these proteins that we just mentioned here. So the glucose gate here, they're going to open, then when it's here, they're going to close here and open here, and they're going to get inside the cell. All right, so here we have the, uh, the summary of what we was talking here. Look at this, this is very simple. So we have the passive transportation, the uh, universal law of equilibrium. So here we have, this is the cell membrane here, this is the cell membrane, all this is the cell membrane. Let me see if I can bigger. Yes, oh my God, yes. So we have passive transportation, this is outside, this is inside. All this, what you see here is a cell membrane. All these are cell, mem cell membrane. Let's start with the, for the simple diffusion. This simple diffusion, simple diffusion, if you see here, this number of molecules are, are higher than here. So we have high concentration outside and low concentration inside. The molecules are so tiny, so small, they can pass between the phospholipids. So that means that they don't need energy, they are going to pass through the phospholipids, and that is the simple diffusion. That is the gas exchange. Gas exchange. Gas exchange of what? Oxygen and carbon dioxide. Next, the next one. We have the facility diffusion. Facility diffusion is the protein here. The protein, this is the most common protein are going to, look at this, these proteins are going to hit here, they are going to open, then they are going to pass, go down, 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 and when it's here, they are going to close on the top and open on the bottom. That is facilitated diffusion, facilitated diffusion. Others are going to be channels, just direct channels, but just remember, this is facilitated diffusion, facilitated diffusion, facilitated diffusion. So what is the best example? The best example are the absorption of the nutrients, amino acids, fatty acids, and the glucose that is composed of, of the, all the mono, uh, monomers of the monosaccharides. Is that clear or not, please? Everybody repeat me, please. Repeat, what is the classification of the passive transportation? Say it one time at least. Simple diffusion. Simple diffusion. Exactly. What is the classification of the passive transportation? Simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion. They do need they need energy, yes or no? No. 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 Right? And they follow the law of the uh, equilibrium. Equilibrium. The universal law of equilibrium. From that means that, that the molecules are going to go from high concentration to low concentration. You okay with that? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. All right, that perfect, is. perfect. Okay, so let's keep moving. Uh, we have the active transportation. That is the other, the other group, all right? So look at this. The act, so I need to add, I'm trying to find that moment to tell you how to call this more properly, but you will see. All right, so now we have transport membrane transportation divided into passive and active transportation. The active transportation is very simple, but very important. So the active transportation is going to be uh, using energy. You use energy. Here, we don't use energy. In the passive, we don't use energy. In the active, we use energy. So why do we need energy? Okay, so let's make an example again. Let's make an example. The example will be, uh, what will be the example? Uh, okay, okay. So let's go to the river. You want to go to a river? Let's go to a river. 
okay, a river. And let's put a boat in the river. So you're in the boat in the river, right? You're in the boat in the river. And uh, the boat, how is going to move? The move, the boat is going to move from, from following the the stream of the river, right? Yes. Right. And why the why the water is moving? Why the water is moving? By magic or what? So the water is moving because behind the boat you have high pressure, and be, and in front of the boat you have low pressure. So the boat obviously is going to go from higher pressures to low pressures yes or no yes yes it's like you are you are you are for example watering your plants the water how is coming out from the hose right so just in think about so for the moment that you open the hose on the faucet this that is where you have the highest pressure right but at the end of the hose is where you have low pressure yes or no yeah right yes so that is the same principle they are going the, the water is going to run from high pressure to low pressure okay yes. and that is the equivalence to say the molecules go from high concentration to lower concentration like the river in your boat we okay with that yes mm -hmm. yes okay so that is tell me do you need to move something you need to row you need to do this in your in your boat or something no right the boat is moving by itself are you using energy for that no right you are sitting just watching the birds the clouds whatever right so that is how is the simple or the passive transportation they go from high concentration to low concentration you okay with that yeah yeah now that is the breaking point right now. Now that instead you to go down the stream, you want to go upstream. You want to go to the opposite direction. You need to go to the opposite direction. And tell me, so you face your boat in the opposite direction. So do you need to you need to row against the current? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. And when you row against the current. You need energy or no? You need to use yes. energy? Yes. Or no? yes. That is a active transportation. So go from low concentration to high concentration. That is the active transportation because you need to row, you need the energy to go against the stream. You hear me that? Yes. That is the active transportation. Now, the names I need to tell you Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Now uh, we have we we this difference the difference between concentrations. is called that is called the concentration gradient you okay with that so what is the concentration gradient gradient means the difference of concentrations so the difference outside inside of concentrations, that that difference is called the concentration gradient. That is the, the word that we use. Concentration gradient. What is a concentration gradient? Is that in and out there is a difference of concentration. That's it. Okay. All right. We okay with that? Yeah. Now, when you go, let's make the river like this. Make the river. A river. The river is going to go in this direction. Here you are with a boat here or doing something, boat, okay? And actually you're you're going down the stream, right? Sure. You're going down the stream. Down the stream, down the stream. Down the stream is the same to say down 
the concentration gradient. And when you go to what you want to go in the opposite, when the time that you want to go in the opposite direction, like this here, that you need energy, you're going to go against against the stream. All call that against the concentration gradient. Okay, so that's it. No more. There's one more, but two more, but it can. But this is not the. That is the main thing. So when you go upstream, you go against the concentration gradient. When you go down the stream, you're going to go down the concentration gradient. You can go down or towards the concentration gradient. It's the same thing. Down or towards the concentration gradient. Okay, and the other one, when you go to go uh, against the current, against the stream, is going to be called against the concentration gradient. So just put in your mind, stream, 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 equal to say concentration gradient. Stream is equal to say concentration gradient. You go upstream, or uh, actually against the stream, you go against the concentration gradient. That is where you use energy, energy. But when you go down the stream or down the concentration gradient, there is no need for energy. You okay with that? Yes. Everybody's clear on that? Yes. 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 Okay, so the best example, the best example that we are going to have for a, for a active transportation are going to be the sodium potassium pump. Sodium potassium pump. Without that, we will die. If we don't have this sodium potassium pump, we will be dead. And the sodium potassium pump is important because you're going to uh, you're going to know in the next few in the a few classes in a few a few classes a few classes that the sodium potassium pump is needed in order to have the right. muscle contraction you need to have your your heart contraction you the, you need sodium potassium for a, the smooth muscle contraction you need sodium potassium to have electrical impulses in your nervous system so sodium potassium is huge and what we there that is working with active transportation that include the protein pump protein pump so protein pump are going to be this protein, this green, do you see here, this green? Good here, what this show is a protein. This protein is going to take out sodium and bring in potassium. So that is what we call a protein sodium potassium, the pump, sodium potassium pump. And that is very important, active because we use energy. Yes, yes, we use energy. Okay, so, Another example for that that can be asked in the exam is the ph phagocytosis. Phagocytosis. The phagocytosis, what is the phagocytosis? Phagocytosis means the um, uh, is, phagos is when the cell is going to eat. For example, here we have an, a cell, neutrophil. Here is a bacteria. The second, uh, second uh, moment will be like this. Phagocytosis. So they are going to change the shape of the of the cell around the around the bacteria. Yes, and then there, the second stage will be like this. The bacteria is inside already, and then they close here, and the bacteria is going to get inside of the cell. That phagocytosis is means bacteria eating. So the bacteria is going to incorporate phagocytosis. Phagocytosis means incorporate solid structures inside the cell. That is what means phagocytosis. Incorporate solid 
structures within the cell or inside in uh, within the cell so they are going to eat the bacteria or other structures phagocytosis so the best example for phagocytosis will be the uh, uh with white cells all right so let's make a summary here number one be half just mentally close your eyes and think about draw in your mind membrane transportation your super top super favorite of the main the cell, cell membrane transportation the cell membrane divide in passive and active passive no energy needed active we need energy passive we have so far the simple diffusion and the facilitate diffusion the simple diffusion are going the best example carbon dioxide and oxygen the facility diffusion the best example the absorption of nutrients that pass towards the uh, i mean towards the through the cell membrane inside the cell who are those the amino acids the monomers the monomer fatty acids and the monomer monosaccharide so those are the best example for facilitate diffusion Are you okay with that yes Yes. Yeah. The culmination of all this. <laughs> so, how this substance? What is in common for the passive, uh, for for the simple diffusion? S listen to this. I said simple diffusion. I didn't say simple only. I didn't say diffusion only. I said simple diffusion. First and last name. Okay. And we have the facilitate diffusion. I didn't say facilitate only. I didn't say diffusion. I said facilitate diffusion. In both cases, simple diffusion and facilitate diffusion, in both cases, in simple and facilitate diffusion, the, the, uh, the molecules are going to go from, are going to, are going to go down, are going to go down the concentration gradient. Down the concentration gradient. Are going down. So simple diffusion and facilitate diffusion are going down the concentration gradient. You okay with that? Down the river. You okay with that or no? Please. Yes. yes. Okay. And when you have active transportation, are going to be against the concentration gradient, upstream. That is the best example: sodium potassium pump and the phagocytosis that's it there is one more thing we need to talk after the lunch break you okay with that yes if, yep. we, if we if we will be in campus i will do some activities coming out coming in into the classroom holding each other high concentration low concentration so but but basically yeah we are online so we are doing the best we can Okay, any question, please? Okay, gracias. So I will see you at, where is Otis, Mr. Otis? Otis, are you there? Otis, Otis is always making sounds, so I, I, I don't see him for. I uh, think he was driving think, a while yeah. ago. Driving. Okay, uh, I will see you at one five, it's okay? Okay. 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 All right. See you then. Bye. What time? One o five. One o five. Yes. Oh five. Okay. Thanks. One zero five. All right. Thank you. <laughs>
Hello. Hello, Dr. Jude. Hello. Hello. This is my internet is unstable. So what does it mean? Hopefully there is no going to be outage or something. You can you see my uh, my screen? No. Yes. 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 Okay. yes. All right. So let's get this start here. It's a lot of material. See. All right. So we need to keep going. All right, so simple diffusion and then phagocytosis. We already, oh, respiratory practice is a lot. Okay, hopefully we can have the time. We will, we will have. Okay. Everybody's here, please. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. Okay, guys. So listen to this. Who is nice? Who has nice court in there? I don't read the name. Nikki, your courting are very nice. Nikki, are you there? Nikki, 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 Miss Nikki. Yes, Excellent. I'm here. Okay, Miss Nikki. Thank you. All right. So let's let's get this started here. All right, so this is very important to understand uh, glucosuria, uh, to understand um, diabetes, to understand um, diarrheas. All right, so let's get started. So we have here the membrane transportation. Again, the membrane transportation. I know, I know. Membrane transportation are going to divide it into passive and active. Passive, no energy. Active, yes, energy. Passive, we have the simple diffusion. We have the facilitate diffusion. And the active transportation, we, got, we have directly the, the, the more common uh, examples will be the sodium, potassium pump, and the phagocytosis. This simple diffusion, the best example is the gas exchange. oxygen and carbon dioxide. Facilitate diffusion, the best example is absorption of micronutrients or monomers by the intestines. Imagine the intestinal cells are going to absorb these amino acids, fatty acids, and the monosaccharides. Okay? All right, so is that clear? Yes. Yes. But the third one that is passive transportation, and this is the last one, there is no more. It's called the osmosis. Do you do you talk about osmosis before in your past? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So now we are going to try to make it clear or reinforce what you already know. So conclusion. Passive, we have three passive transportation. One simple, two facilitate, and three osmosis. Osmosis is a passive transportation. So all the transportations that we are talking about are do not need energy. Only the energy, there is the best example, sodium, potassium, phagocytosis. The rest is passive transportation. So passive transportation could be simple diffusion. 
Passive transportation can be facilitated diffusion. Passive transportation will be osmosis. And right now, we are going to talk about osmosis. Okay. So we already know we, what is the concentration gradient. We are going to talk osmosis. Os, osmosis. We already we are going to use terms that we have the concentration gradient. Concentration gradient. Semi permeable membrane. Okay. The classical example, the classical, I mean, illustration about osmosis is this. So we have here two compartments, one compartment here and another compartment here. This is what we are going to call this line you see here is we call the semi permeable membrane. Here we are going to have what we call the solvent. Solvent is going to be water and solute are going to be the molecules, Mo other molecules, other molecules. All right, so let's, support, let's start. Here we have, for example, uh, this level of water. This is the level of water. I'm going to make it water here. It's going to be water here. And we have another level of water here, divided by a semi-permeable membrane. Divided by a semi-permeable membrane. This is the semi-permeable membrane, okay? Now, here we have inside, we are going to have the solutes. For example, you have here one, uh, two, three solutes. And here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten solutes. Okay? All right. So this is where is high concentration, A or B? B. B. B, high concentration. So based on what we learned in the previous hour, the the universal law is telling you that the molecules, they need to pass from one place to another place, correct? From the high concentration to the low concentration. Yes or no? Right, yes. yes. Right? But the molecules, listen, the molecules are too big to pass. Molecules, big molecules, in order to pass the cell membrane. The cell membrane is actually a barrier but only just molecules that are very tiny can pass. But molecules that are too big, the molecules, the, the, the cell membrane, this is the semi-permeable membrane, is the cell membrane, okay? Imagine the cell membrane. So the molecules are very, they're not able to pass because they are too big. They are too big, too big. Now, what is doing the body? In order to keep the equal concentrations outside, uh, I mean, uh, in A and B, in order to keep the same concentration, if you see that the molecules cannot pass, because the ideal will be that molecules passing here from high concentration to low concentration to have equal number of, of molecules, but it's not possible because the molecule, the membrane is uh, cannot allow that. The molecules are too big. So what is doing the body? The body, what is doing is to take the water, this water that is here, and pass to this, to from A to B. The water is passing A to B. Why? Because when they do that, they are going to dilute. The word is to dilute. Are going to dilute the concentration. So that means that this level of water are going to be basically going here now, and all this water are passing to B, and now the water is going to go to this level. And now you will see that the concentration in A is equal to the concentration of B. Okay? All right, so now, yeah. 
let's have a, a tea, a cup of tea. You like tea? Great tea, right? Great tea, whatever. So tea. You have a great, uh, you have tea and you put too much sugar in your tea. So how are you going to make it less sweet? To add more water, correct? Right. Exactly. So you have your, the concentration of sweetness that you have is like, let's put it like three. So that is your taste. That, that is what you like. Okay. But actually, the, uh, three, uh, three, three uh, teaspoons. It's a little bit too much, but anyhow, three teaspoons. And that is what you like your tea. But if you have too sweet, it's too sweet. What about if you put some more water in order to make it a, a less sweet and you have the level of three teaspoons of sugar? Did I uh, uh, express myself properly or not? No, yes, it's perfect. Yes. Very clear. Okay. So that is what happened with the cells. So when you have too much concentration of some solutes, potassium, sodium, whatever, outside of the cell, so, uh, of, I mean, molecules, big molecules, big molecules outside of the cell, and the cell are not a, uh, able to pass through the cell membrane, what is trying to compensate the concentrations is just the water. More diluted or less diluted in, in, in order to have equal concentrations outside and inside. Okay, the, the, the semi-permeable membrane is called semi, semi because it's going to be permeable, means permeable means passing substance through the membrane, but it's called semi-permeable because they cannot allow all the, mole, all the solutes passing because some molecules are too big. And that is what is coming on the osmosis. Osmosis is going to make the equilibrium of concentrations through the passage of water from the area of high concentration, so from low concentration, sorry, to high concentration, in order to dilute the high concentration, like the tea, less sweet, you add more water. So you, at the end, you have equal concentrations, what you are looking for at the end of the, of the process. All right, so knowing that, let's go to the next level. Okay. My God, if we don't have time, just you please give me 10 more minutes at the end because I want to be sure that everybody got this. But if you are okay, I can pass directly to the next, okay? All right. All right, so let's see. Ah, I'm going to delete everything. All right. All right, so here we have a cell. Ah, I don't know. We have a cell here. We have another cell here. Those are three situations that happen with osmosis. The nucleus, and another cell here. Another cell here. Okay, so you see here, this is outside and this is inside. Inside, okay, I don't need to do that, okay, inside. All right, so here we have inside, where is the semi-permeable membrane? The semi-permeable membrane, semi-permeable membrane is equal to say the cell membrane. So all this is the semi-permeable membrane, you okay with that? Yes. Okay. So now, outside basically is going to be the blood. Let's make it the blood, plasma blood. Okay. Outside, outside the blood. So here we have the solutes. Solutes are we are going to have like one, two, three, four. And here we are going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Here we, you can see visualize who, where is more and where is less. Here we are going to have the opposite. We are going to have one, two, three, four. And here outside we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, many more. Just to visualize better. Okay? Many more. Okay. And in the third case, A, we have B, we have C. 
they're going to be one, two, three, four. And here we have one, two, three, four equal. Okay. So, yes. so where is high concentration? Will be I'm going to put here uh, inside. Inside. Going to, inside. Inside. No. So let's let's make it like this. This is going to be A and this is B. Okay. So A is high concentration and B, yes or no? Yes. 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 So A is high concentration. I'm going to put it here on the side just to make it simple. A plus uh, are going to be more than B. Concentrate. Here we have A is less concentrated than B. B is right. more concentration than A. And here we have A equal concentration than B. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So this is the crucial moment. So please pay attention to this. Please pay attention to this. So outside, 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 outside. If you're going to compare with the inside. So you are talking about the outside first. You're talking about the outside. So in the outside, we are going to talk about a word that is tonic. So please, there is noise on the back, please. Please, please, please. This is important. This is, I don't want, we don't need distractors, please. Okay. Tonic. Tonic. Tonic means concentration. Concentrate. Don't forget that. So here, the outside compared to the inside, this is hypo. Hypo means low. Hypotonic. So the concentration is low compared to the inside. Always, your this tonic is related to the outside, to the blood. In the blood, we have high concentration compared to the inside the cell. So in this case, this is going to be called hypertonic. So hypertonic, who is hypertonic? Outside of the cell. Who is hypotonic? Outside of the cell. Here, in the, in the third case, we are going to have equal concentrations, and that means iso. Iso means equal and isotonic. You follow me? Yes. yes. Okay. Now, tell me. In order to have equilibrium with equal concentrations, and we know that molecules are not able to pass because they are too big to pass a cell membrane, the semi-permeable membrane, what happened with the water? The water in this first scenario, in the hypotonic, in the hypotonic, the, uh, the, the water is going to come in or out of the cell? What is going in. to be the water? The water is going to come in towards the cell inside. or inside the cell? Inside. Inside. Inside the cell. So the water is coming this way. Why? Yeah. Because they are going to try to dilute what mm -hmm. is the more concentration. You okay with that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Next. Here in the, in the next scenario. So you have low concentration inside, but high concentration inside, uh, outside. So where the water is going to go? The water is going to go to try to dilute what? The hypertonic. Outside. Outside. They're going outside. to go outside. And in the third case scenario, there is no entry of water because there is no need to change the concentration. They are already equal outside and inside. You okay with that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So how to remember the this very simple? So you need to remember hypotonic, hypertonic, and isotonic. SMS, osmosis, simple, diff is going to be uh, a passive transportation. All right, so the way to remember that is this. Hypotonic, hypertonic, isotonic, always is related to what is outside the cell in comparison to inside the cell. Okay, so just remember this. A, a high concentration, High concentration are going to pull water. So wherever you have the high concentration, the high concentration is going to pull water to the high concentration. You okay with that? 
Yeah. Yes. Simple, right? So hypotonic hyperdoning is going to pull water. So go from outside to inside. Here in hypo, hypertonic. So this hypertonic is going to pull water. Pull water from where? From inside. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. So now, if you have a hypotonic substance in the patient, what happened? Water start to get in. And the water start to get swollen. The, the cell. The cell start to get big and big and big because it's a lot of water coming in. It's a lot of water coming in. And they're so big that they're going to blow up and die the cell. For example, you uh you know I, what is a hypotonic substance? Hypotonic substance are going to be just the plain water. Plain water. So if you put water in the vein of the patient from the faucet, you, you're going to give an hypotonic substance. So what is doing that? That is going to make, make dilute it because so much water, you're drinking water, that is going to dilute all the, all the elements in the blood, making this hypotonic. And what happened? Water starts to get into the cell and the cell starts to swell, swell and blow up and, and die the cell. I will give you one example. Do you hear? Do you hear about this contest that was many years ago? I think it was a, a woman, and the, and the radio in the radio was, and that say the they said the contest was, who can drink more water without pee? Who can drink more water without pee? All right. So that was the the contest, and you know what happened with the winner? Yeah, she died. She died. She died. She died. Why? Because she was taking so much water, and the water is hypotonic. And this water will go into the bloodstream, making the blood hypotonic. So the cells was actually uh, entering water from the blood into the cells. As in, exactly. And actually, the patient died. Why? Because the most uh, the the main cells who are being affected at the beginning from the very beginning are the nervous cells. So the nerve cells were swollen. There was like balloons inside. So much that they are going to blow up and the patient get into coma and dead. And that's where the patient died. Yeah. You okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So that is hypotonic. So just remember, when you have a, a hypotonic substance, just to remember, is going to become the cell hypopotamus hypopotamus so the cell become big hypopotamus and they blow up hypotonic hypopotamus i don't know how to do hypopotamus no i don't know hypopotamus okay they blow up do you agree with yes. us Yes. Now, in the case that you have, for example, hypertonic solution, you give IB solution, hypertonic, like, for example, 10% uh, uh, dextrose, uh, dextrose is very high concentration. Sometimes it's needed, but not all the time. So what happened? The hypertonic is outside in the blood. So, uh, you know, the hyper, uh, high concentration pool water. So basically it's going to dehydrate the cell. The cells are going to shrink, totally shrink. That shrink because all the water is coming out from the cell. And that is called crenation. That crenation. In both cases, the patient actually will destroy cells and they can die. Do you okay with that? Yes. Yes. Is that clear, please? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's keep moving. Seriously, there is no somebody want me to explain again. We have half an hour. Hopefully, we have time. So I'm going to ask you ten more minutes. So every everybody get clear on that. <coughs> on that. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's keep moving. There you are. See. 
the equilibrio, we were talking about the equilibrio, the universal approach to equilibrio, hypertonic, hypotonic, isotonic. Okay, simple diffusion, the best example is going to be oxygen and carbon dioxide. That's happening in the lungs, simple diffusion, gases, oxygen, and carbon dioxide, tissue or gas exchange, that, okay, so, uh, okay, I need to explain this. All right, so here we have, this is the alveolus. The alveolus. All right, so look at this. This is gas exchange. This is a gas exchange is oxygen and carbon dioxide. Okay. You know, in blue, the carbon dioxide is coming. This is the alveolus. This is the alveolar sac. This is the alveolus. Only this is the alveolus. And around, we have a small vessel, a small artery. That every, We have 700 million alveoli in the lungs. Uh, in, in each lung, we have 350 million. So each alveoli is surrounded by a vessel where it's going to happen the gas exchange. Now, when the when you are actually the blood is coming without oxygen, remember without oxygen, right? Yes or no? So they have a little bit of oxygen, a little bit of oxygen in the blood, the blood that is coming back to the to the to the lungs. But when you inhale, when you inhale, you have a lot of oxygen coming in. Yes or no? Yes. So yes. when they find here low oxygen, very tiny, and big oxygen, they go from high concentration to low concentration. That is the uh, towards the concentration gradient. And their oxygen is going to pass, as you see in this arrow. So from blue become red. Because by simple diffusion, by the concentration gradient, when you inhale air, oxygen, that is going to be high concentration of alveoli, but what is coming to the alveolus is low concentration of oxygen. So they are going to pass through simple diffusion like this. Okay, we got it? Yep. Okay, perfect. All right, so Mozi, we already talked about that. Pygocytosis, we already talked about that. Oh God, this is huge, very important. So please, please. All right, so this is the moment you're going to learn. We are applying lecture one, two, three, and four. All right, so intracellular versus extracellular. Intracellular means inside the cell, extracellular outside the cell. The intracellular, we have ions. So you know that element, let's review very fast, element or mineral, they are not actually having any charge, no positive or negative. They are actually neutral, right? Like appears in the periodic table. Then when they lose or gain, or gain electrons, it's called valence, valency, they are going to become uh, ions, ions. The ions from neutral, become neutral at the beginning, become an ion. That means charge positive or negative. Ions are going to be a, a cation, cation and the other ion we, we will call an, 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 ion, an ion. Cation, we, we remember, is positive and an ion is negative. Cation is going to be written like this cation, big T, cation. What it means? Positive. Okay? So we have cations and anions, anions that are going to be located inside and outside. This is crucial to understand arrhythmias, heart failure, heart attacks, medications. There is a lot, a lot of C that you will see later on. So hypokalemia, hyperkalemia, if you don't understand this, it's going to be very difficult to get later, okay? All right, so let's do it now. So here we have these cations, that is potassium, please. You need to remember potassium is positive plus. You need to write it down as it is. You cannot write it down without the symbols, okay? It's not going to have any sense. It's going to make you a lot of confusion. So you must set your mind to write down potassium, potassium positive. Sodium, potassium positive. Phosphate, potassium negative. Chloride, pota uh, chloride negative. 
Okay, you can write down plus one, plus one, minus one, plus one, or you can just put a minus, a minus, a minus, or plus, plus. Okay, I put it like that because I'm lazy to write down too much. All right. All right, so here we have, so what are these electrolytes and what is an electrolyte? Electrolyte, electrolyte is, electrolyte is, a, is an ion in body fluids. You okay with that? Yes. Ion in body fluids. So what is electrolyte? It's an ion. And why is called electrolyte? Because these ions are located in the fluids of the body. You okay with that? Electrolyte. You okay with that? All right. So yeah. Yeah, that, I, I repeat many times. I don't know how to say. All right. So now, here we have the most common, the most important cation in the extracellular. This is extracellular. Outside of the cell is going to be the sodium. I'm going to ask you what is the most important cation in the extracellular? The sodium. What is the most important anion in the extracellular? The chloride. Okay? What is the most important cation in the intracellular? Potassium. Potassium. What is the most important intracellular uh, anion? Is going to be the phosphate. You okay with that? Yep. Now, how to remember this? You need to remember sodium, potassium, chloride. So if you go to the periodic table, you will find like this. Read the first column. Hydrogen, lithium, beryllium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesio, francium. So that I just want you to remember the potassium, sodium, potassium, uh, uh, sodium, potassium. This is one side. In the other side of the periodic table, we have the chloride. It's a negative. Everything that is on the right side of the periodic table is positive. On the left side, sorry. On the left side of the periodic table is positive. Everything that is on the right side of the periodic table is negative. And chloride is going to be in that area, in that negative area on the right side of the periodic table. Okay, how to remember that? So what is, what is sodium chloride? Tell me first, what is sodium chloride? What is the other name of sodium chloride? Salt. Is the salt, salt, table salt. You have the salt in your kitchen? Okay, so homework, go and see the salt. Oh, you, your name is sodium chloride. Your name is sodium chloride. Repeat it three times and you will never forget. Okay, so now you're going to have dinner and the dinner, you have your plate here. You have your chicken, your, your T-bone, whatever, New York, Angus, grass-fed, whatever you want. And you have here outside of the plate, you have what? The salt paper shaker. Yes or no? Yes. What is this? Salt. What is this? Sodium chloride. Correct? Okay. Yes. So just to remember this, the, you, the salt shaker is not in not in, on, on your plate. It's outside of the plate. You don't put it the, the shaker inside the plate. Right, you shake the salt, yes, but but the salt shaker is outside, always uh, uh, outside the plate. So this is the cell, and this is the salt shaker. Salt shaker is outside of the cell, outside of the plate. So that two things are going: sodium positive and chloride negative are going to be the extracellular, and the rest you need to memorize this: potassium and phosphate. Potassium positive, phosphate negative. Are you okay with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So we talk about phagocytosis. And let's talk about respiratory system. What time is it, please? 1.39. Oh, okay. I will try to do my best. Okay. If I read, I will take I will finish in 10 minutes. All right. So let's start. We are going to talk about the respiratory system. The respiratory system is going to be, or called the pulmonary system, are going to be divided. The respiratory system, listen to this, respiratory system is divided into the respiratory 
tract. Listen to this. Track is not the same to say system. Track is not the same to say system. Track is all the tubing, all the tubes, the trachea, the uh, the uh, bronchi, etc. So that is the respiratory tract. We okay with that? And we have, and the respiratory tract are going to be divided into a respiratory tract and the lungs itself. Lungs. Lungs. So the respiratory tract are divided in the upper respiratory tract lower. and the lower respiratory tract. Okay, so where is the upper and the lower respiratory tract? Why you need to remember upper and lower? Why? Because the pathologies that you will see later on are different from the upper and the lower. Upper will be a simple cold. Lower will be a pneumonia. And the treatment and the nursing process and the nursing considerations, intervention, planification, goal, monitoring, all this stuff are different. So you need to remember what is and where the where is the upper and what is the lower respiratory tract. All right, so we okay with that? Okay. Yeah. The primary function, thank you, the primary function of the respiratory system, respiratory system comprise the upper lower respiratory tract and the lungs, right? So the respiratory system, the main function is the gas exchange that we already mentioned, gas exchange. And that is the ventilation. What is ventilation? So let me see if I have here. All right, so I'm going to go two things. Oh, okay, we have the, uh, we have ventilation. We have two things, basically. We have the, the respiration. That is the same to say oxygenation. Another function is the ventilation. This is crucial because you're going to do assessment of the patient with respiratory problems, checking the respiration and the ventilation. So what is the respiration? The respiration you assess as a nurse, you're going to assess how much of oxygen is in the blood. How much actually oxygen is. So respiration is basically measuring the gas exchange gas exchange the gas exchange and the gas exchange is going to be uh, measured with an oximeter that thing that you put in the finger right and this yes. oximeter yeah. is calculating how much the blood is the oxygen is concentrated in the blood the concentration will be between 90 to 100 percent saturation okay so that is the gas exchange so you can assess as a nurse, how is the gas exchange? I'm very, very nice because looking at the gas exchange is like you are putting your eyes inside the lungs and looking that alveoli having half, half gas exchange by simple diffusion with the artery. Literally, it's like you are visualizing, looking those lungs having gas exchange in that, in that spot. Of the, in those in that area of the lung, so gas exchange. So that is the respiration or oxygenation, one of the functions of the lungs. And the next one is the ventilation. Seems familiar, but is seems similar, but is different. The ventilation ventilation is basically the uh, uh, the mechanical activity of the thorax, mechanical activity of the thorax. What is this mechanical activity of the thorax? Are going to be the inspiration and expiration. And expiration. So now you are learning something that you're going to do in, in, in med search and in your practice. And that is what is the purpose of this class, just to teach you these first steps. So you need to assess how is the respiratory system in this patient. You need to check the oximeter, oxygenation. How is the gas exchange occurring? Is a good gas exchange or not? 
And then the ventilation. How do you check the ventilation? You check the ventilation, checking the respiratory rate. Simple or not? So you need to check yeah. in one minute what is the respiratory rate of that patient. And the respiratory rate in NCLEX and everywhere is between 12 to 20. If you have different value in clinical and other, you must know 12 to 20, period. That is NCLEX and your HESI. You okay with that? Yes. Okay. I heard some other name, but in general, we do 12 to 20. But it's a rule. In English and HESI, in order to answer your question, give you case scenarios, they are going to put you some respiratory rates. And you need to know that a HESI, English, and exams in the school, everywhere, we use 12 to 20, period. You okay with that? All right. Yeah. All right. So now you already know how to do it. So now let's do, let's do the upper and the lower respiratory tract. So somebody tell me five minutes before two o'clock, please. Okay, <clears throat> so here we have, here we have number one, that we are going to talk about the pharynx. Uh, all right, so if that is not clear in the past when you were talking about pharynx, we are going to make it clear now. Please raise fast. Okay, so we have the pharynx. I'm going to put the pharynx here. The pharynx are going to be two, three parts. The oropharynx, no, I'm going to put, first of all, the nasopharynx, the nasopharynx, we have the oropharynx, and we have the laryngopharynx. Laryngopharynx is called to uh, uh, lar larynx only. You can call larynx or laryngopharynx. Uh, it's the same. La laryngopharynx or larynx are going to be the same. Larynx. The larynx. Okay? All this is the pharynx. When you say pharynx, you're talking about the nasopharynx, you're talking about the oropharynx, and you're talking about the larynx. Larynx is the same to say laryngopharynx. Laryngopharynx. You okay with that? Yes. Okay. So talking about here, where is the nasopharynx? The nasopharynx go here from the nose up to here to the to the bottom. This is the nasopharynx. Nasopharynx. So the nose cavity down to the throat, all this is called throat or pharynx. So that is the oro, the nasopharynx. Here we have the tongue. In this tongue, you see the tongue, here's the muscle of the tongue. You pull, you pull down the tongue, and all this is going to be called the oropharynx. The oropharynx. The oropharynx. That is called the oropharynx. And the last one is the laryngopharynx. The laryngopharynx is going to be this area. Up to here. That is the la larynx or laryngopharynx. Okay? All right. So these three are all together are going to be called the upper respiratory tract. There's other components like that. We are not going to talk no, now about the, the sinuses, all right? So frontal, etc. So there's some other cavities. But just remember, nasal, oral, and laryngopharynx. So all three are going to be the upper respiratory tract. We okay with that? Yes. Yes. So these three, as you see here, are going to be the upper respiratory tract. Below that, as you can infer, we have here the trachea, the trachea. Then we have the bronchi divided here, the bronchi, okay? And those, including the lungs, everything that is below, 
the larynx below the larynx. The larynx be belong to the upper. Below the larynx start the trachea. And this trachea is already the beginning of the lower respiratory tract. Lower respiratory tract. You okay with that? Yes. Okay. So now let's go to the, if you see, oh, if you see here, here we have the nasopharynx. This is the tongue, the tongue, the tongue. You pull down the tongue. This is the oropharynx. And here we have one structure that is very important. Let me see if I have it here bigger. No. Okay. So this is the biggest I have. Uh, Okay, okay, listen to this, please. Do you have uh, your mama, your grandmama, your grandpapa saying, please don't eat and talk at the same time? Yes. yes. Right? Because what can happen? You're going to choke, right? Right. Yeah. All right, excellent. All right, so I will tell you this. Look at this. This is the larynx. Let me see if the larynx is somewhere here. Uh, it's upside down. Okay, so I will do this. So the larynx, the larynx is what we call the, the voice box. Is what we call the Adam's apple. Can you touch your Adam's apple? Girls are less developed than male. Can you touch your Adam's apple here? The hardest portion here? Can you touch it? Do you touch it? Yes. That is the larynx. Okay? The larynx is going to be something like that. This is the larynx. This is the larynx. Here inside the larynx, we have the vocal cords. Vocal cords. Those are the vocal cords inside the larynx. Vocal cords. Okay. Now, here we have, I want to, I should have a better picture, but I didn't have. So this is here the trachea. This space, can you see this space? Yes. That is the trachea. Behind the trachea, we have the respiratory tract. We are going to have the esophagus. Look at this. This is the esophagus. This is the entry of the esophagus. So we have one cavity here and another cavity here. So there's respiratory system here in this area and on the posterior portion, the we have the esophagus. All right, so saying that, this is the larynx. This portion is the larynx. This is the larynx. On the top of the larynx, we have a door. A door that is open and closed. Open and closed. This door is called the epiglottis. Try to use your imagination. This is a door. All this is a door. They are going to close. Uh, covering the, the, the trachea, sorry, tra covering the larynx, because the larynx is up to here. This is the larynx, and the door is here. So this door is going to close. When? When you eat, when you swallow. When you swallow, when you're going to swallow, this door, the epiglottis, is going to close the respiratory tract. And the only option for the food is to go to the esophagus. It's not perfect. You okay with that? Yeah. Well, every time you swallow, the epiglottis is going to close and they're going to prevent the food getting into the respiratory system. So that is about, and one thing here, the epiglottis, epiglottis is a cartilage. Every time you swallow saliva or whatever food, they are going to basically close the respiratory tract. It's going to close the larynx. Epiglottis, write down that, please. Epiglottis, close the larynx. 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 So where is the larynx? The larynx is on the top or, be, or under the larynx? 
the epiglottis, sorry. Epiglottis is on the top or below the larynx? On the top. On the top. Write down that, please. Epiglottis is on the top of the larynx. Epiglottis is on the top of the larynx. Epiglottis on the top of the larynx. Epiglottis on the top of the larynx. Okay. Dr. G, it's the same as when you um, when you come out of surgery and then usually you're on a, like a liquid diet, so they always check to see if you're aspirating and they do a check before you can take solids. It's kind of the same thing, right? Uh, you're talking about surgery? Yeah, like you know how usually they put you on a liquid diet before they put you on solids, so then you have to see a specialist so they check no. to make sure that you don't aspirate. No, so that no, you don't no, no. Get... Uh, actually, actually. Or is that the... something else? No, no, no. I will tell you very fast. Before surgery, you need to have empty stomach. Mm -hmm. Empty stomach. Why? Because during the surgery, especially when you have when, when you have anesthesia, they mm -hmm. general anesthesia. So yeah. they put they put uh, they, they they make an intubation. Mm -hmm. Intubation. The intubation is going to press the pharynx, promoting nauseous, and that can produce vomiting. If you have some content of fluid in the stomach, they can get aspirated. Now, mm -hmm. after surgery, the fluid, they give you fluid and solid, no, not because of the aspiration, but because of your intestines caused by the anesthesia is not working. So they give you fluid mm -hmm. because are easy to digest, they're mm -hmm. more solid, until your bowel movements are going to recover because it's lazy after the anesthesia. That takes about 24 hours. Okay. Okay, we got it? Got it. Thanks. All right, so now let's talk about the trachea. So the oh, trachea. You have is... five minutes left. Okay, okay, my God. Okay. All right, so uh, here we have uh, the trachea. Thank you. The trachea is divided in two bronchi. The bronchi are going to divide, 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 divide. Uh, this is about, a, it's about 10 to 12 inches long. And the trachea are going to divide into in 27 times going down to the alveoli. So this is the lower respiratory tract. Okay? Lower respiratory tract. The, here we have the, the bifurcation. Bifurcation means division. I say bifurcation because it's a medical term. It's the division. So the division of what? Of the trachea. They are going to divide in two. Two main bronchi. They are going to enter into the lungs, the bronchi, and divide, 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 divide. Okay, as simple as that. Right. Now, now the long lobes. We have on the right lung. We have three lobes: superior, <laughs> middle, and inferior. Superior, middle, and inferior. The left they have only two: the superior and the inferior. There is no middle. So how to remember that? Three. Your right hand is the strongest. Yes, uh, yes, uh, an example, right? Just to remember, three, three. And the left, weaker, two. Two lobes. Just to remember. I don't, there's no relation between how strong is the right and left lung. Just to remember. You okay? Yes. Okay. So now, uh, let me see. Okay, so I'm going to see this. The lungs then are going to be covered. Listen to this. This is important. Please pay attention. The, the lungs are going to cover by this pleural, pleural membrane. This pleural membrane is this. Pleural membrane is this. Okay? Yeah. Now, look at this. The important of all this is this. The pleural membrane is going to cover each lung. So we have one right pleura and we have one left pleura. The pleura, please pay attention, open eyes very wide. The pleura do not cover each lobe. No. It's going to cover the whole lung. That is different. The pleura is not going to just cover the superior, then the inferior, or the middle, and then the inferior. No, 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 no. The pleura is going to cover everything at the same time. You okay with that? Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. I'm going to give you some example at the end. All right, so we have the diaphragm. The diaphragm, the diaphragm is going to be a muscle, and this muscle is one of the respiratory muscles. Respiratory muscles. 
So one thing, when you inhale, the other name of inhalation is the inspiration. You must know this. The name of exhalation is the same to say expiration. You need, you need to know that. There is two muscles, main muscles of the respiratory system, main muscles. That is going to be the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles. Tell me, you, you like to eat ribs? Yeah. Yeah, that meat on the ribs, that is, that is the intercostal muscle, okay? Next time, when you eat ribs, it's, oh, I'm eating intercostal muscles, okay? All right, so intercostal muscle. So intercostal muscle, and I put it like this, because the most important muscle for inhalation or inspiration is the diaphragm. And the most important muscle for exhalation or expiration is the intercostal muscle. You okay with that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So let's talk about two more things. That is the, the pneumothorax and the atelectasis. Pneumothorax, if you see here, the pneumothorax, we have, when you have an injury or wound on the, on the chest, the lungs are going to actually shrink immediately shrink and that is because the pressure uh, uh, the atmospheric pressure pressure are higher than the intrathoracic pressure intra means inside thoracic means thorax so this had more pressure here than inside so when you have a cut here the air is coming in and when the air is coming in, it's like a vacuum. Your thorax is going to be like a vacuum. So the lungs are going to constrict or actually shrink. And this area you see here is full of air, full of air. That is called pneumothorax. Pneumo means, pneumo means air. Thorax means thorax, so air in the thorax. Pneumothorax is actually the entry of air in the thoracic cavity making the, the the lung get smaller or shrink and basically diminish your ventilation and affect your, your respiration or oxygenation. So what is going to call this, as you say here, look at this, is going to be the, a collapsed lung. Collapsed lung. Collapsed lung. All right. And the last one is the atelectasis. Atelectasis happen mostly after surgery, so there are some exercises that you will learn later on. Atelectasis means totally collapse lung or part of the lung. Why? Not because of the entry of air from outside, but because the alveoli destruction. You have alveoli here. This is alveoli, enter air, going to enter air or exit air. What's happened? The walls, the walls of this alveoli are totally destroyed. Instead to be open for air, they are going to be always like this, destroyed. So the alveoli, you try to breathe in, there is no air coming in because the, the alveoli cannot distend anymore, it's destroyed. And that means collapse of the a part of the whole lung, a telectasis. So what is a telectasis? A collapse of the lung, a part of the lung, because of the destruction of the alveoli. Alveolus, alveolus, alveo, ah, alveolus is singular and alveoli is plural, Latin. Okay? You okay with that? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So now we finish that, but I want to give you two examples. Can we? Can I? Yes. You want yes. you have extra? Okay, give me that extra minute. All right, so look at this bronchi. We have the right and the left, yes. correct? Okay, I'm going to give you a story, okay? Oh my God, I'm, I'm getting under the, my, my couch. Okay, let's go, let's do this. I will tell you a story, Alina, 
right? Alina, you are partially seeing. Okay, anyhow. So uh, there was a car, a mother driving with the baby. He was having a car seat. The baby was in the car seat and the mother was driving. And the baby was eating a candy. The baby was eating candy. And the mother, in the way, she almost had an accident. And she needed to stop the car abruptly, very fast, all of a sudden. And the baby on the back was eating a candy. The candy was passing into the lungs. Well, the baby was safe at the end. But can you imagine the stress and the, all, the, all the unknown and all the anxiety, right? So in that case, tell me, where do you think the candy went? The candy will go basically on the right lung, right lung. Do you have patients who have pneumonia? Somebody had patients who had pneumonia in the past? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That pneumonia was on the right or the left lung? Right, right, right. On the right lung. Why is most common the pneumonias and the aspiration of the candy go to the right lung? Okay, I will tell you now. Look at this. I want you to do this. Like a gun. Give me gun. Give me gun. Okay, no. Oh, no. Two fingers, no. One finger. Okay. Index and, and, and... All right. Now I want you to do this. And I want you to do this. Excellent. Stay there until tomorrow. No, no, no. Yes, yes, no. All right. So now, uh, yes, yes. So no, yes, like this. You got it? Yes. Now, I want you to touch this finger. This finger is the right bronchi. This index is the left bronchi. Okay? Now, look at, the, look at your finger. Your finger, this right lung is more short. It's more wider and it's more straight. The left lung is going to be longer, thinner, and more oblique. Got it? Yes. So now, when some object is coming into the respiratory tract, where, what is going to be more easy? To go straight or make a curve? Go straight. straight to the That's right. why aspirations and objects are going to be aspirated on the most commonly on the right side got it so when what is the what is the application about this you need to always observe check very much the right lung that doesn't mean that it's not in the left lung it can be in the left lung but in the majority of the cases are going to be in the right lung but don't overlook at all it's equally important the left side so now you understand what is the anatomical consideration in order to understand that. Okay? Another thing. Yeah. Can I do another thing? Yes. yes. How people die from pneumonia? Okay, where, where, where is the, my graphing, for heaven's sake? Sorry, sorry, sorry. My God. Uh -huh. Where is it? Okay, there you are. I got it. Okay, there you are. If you see here in this graphic, you will have here, this is the alveoli and this is the capillary. When you have pneumonia, pneumonia, you have an inflammation. There is actually a accumulation of fluid. Where is going to be this fluid? This fluid will be between the artery and the alveoli. So it's going to be water just there, here. Here is the water. And that water is going to prevent the gas exchange. So the patient with pneumonia will die from suffocation. Asphyxiation. We got it? Yes. yes. And what is going to be involved there? The oxygenation, the gas exchange, the simple diffusion. How you measure that? With an oximeter. You get it? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. Let me see another thing I'm going to miss here. Uh, 
No, that's all about... Okay, oh, the last thing. Just in case. This bifurcation, this bifurcation, here, this point is called the carina. Carina. The point of bifurcation that is at the level of C4, whatever, on the T4, uh, is going to be the carina. That is the bifurcation of the bronchi. That is the, that point is exactly called carina. Okay, guys. So how you feel? We learned something today. Yes. I will. Yeah. I, I, I wish yeah. I could have more time for you guys, but definitely the time is here. And we are using every single second, as you can tell. Right? So everything is clear. If there is any question, let me know now. When, when is going to be our next meeting? Tomorrow at 9 p.m. Who, is, who, who can help me to remind me, please? Somebody can help me to remind I mean, just like text yes, you. Yes, please. Okay, Alina, thank you. Aurora, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Andrea, too. You thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Otis, Otis is always very busy, so he's not reminding me. Otis is very busy. I got noise in the background. Okay. Oh, you have noise in the background. Why? Why you? Ha okay. Okay, Otis. It's okay. All right, so any comment or any suggestion, please? Everything is okay? We okay? Excellent. So any question, please call me or text me, as you, as, as I mentioned. I'm going to stay until the end. If you want me to do something else, I will be more happy to help you. Also, at this moment, if you want to stay, I will help you. You have a question for me. If not, okay. I will see you tomorrow night, Tuesday at 9 p.m. No, Thank Kobe. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I need, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Careful. Bye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Anna. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Alina. Alina, you have a question? Jojo, Miss Jojo, how is Jojo? Do you yes, do you like the class today? Or do you uh, like uh, I have the question, if you don't mind. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Give me a second. Give me a second, Miss Jojo. Alina, sure. any question? Sure. Alina, you have a question for me, Miss Alina? Miss Harjit, you have any question for me? Miss Alina? Miss Alina? Miss uh, Harjit, do you have a question for me? Okay, so let's let's uh, see. What is your question, Miss Jojo, please? Uh, 